Hello everybody, my name is Sniping is Fun, and welcome you all back to my next top 10 list I'm going to present to all of you here on YouTube. This time, I'm going to be talking about various different video game ideas. Video game ideas that I believe would be kind of cool to actually see made in the near future or far future, or sometime in the future, just to see like games of this these types actually being made would be kind of cool, and their video game ideas I would like to actually see made. Now it's not, this isn't anything to do with all of these remakes I want to see, or sequels I want to see, or franchises I want to see back. I've talked about remakes in one list before, I've talked about sequels and franchises to bring back in another list. This is something entirely different. These are game ideas that I wanted to see made, but and they're ba nine times out of ten, they're going to be probably based off some sort of property done somewhere, either through comic books, mangas, animes, video game, other video game type property ideas, you know, TV shows, cartoons, or whatever the heck. They are based off some sort of IP, some sort of property at some point that I believe, or some or a book, or you know, anything like that, that I believe would be cool to actually see a video game idea made for. Now, these ideas are based off of stuff, like I stated, but not game ideas that have already been made. These are video game ideas that I have not seen made at all during the time video games have been created throughout the entire history of the video game industry that I believe would be cool to see made. Some video game ideas that I would love to see being made. And I, I wanted to mention before I get into this list, like I said, it's not remakes. It's not you know, sequels or franchises to bring back. I've talked about those before and I'll continue to talk about those. These are video game ideas unique in a way that have never been done before that I would love to see made. Now, a lot of them are probably based off some sort of property already out there, whether it's in, already been in the video game before or not, but they have not been made, as far as my knowledge, in these forms. And video game ideas that I would love to actually see made now, some people out there, many fans, many gamers, may agree with some of these. A lot of these ideas may have actually been talked about through the forums, through online, through discussion from gamers before. But this is my own personal list. For my top 10 video game ideas I would love to see made. That I feel should be made. And before we go any further in this intro, let's start with number 10. Number 10 goes for left for The Walking Dead. Now, a lot of people know of the Left 4 Dead franchise. It's a survival team, squad-based, zombie, you know, swarming type game where you play as various survivors trying to survive through like a zombie apocalypse through the first two games, or, well, the only two games, I should say, and you work together, you kill each other, and you get through your missions and survive lots of zombies trying to kill you. What's another zombie IP out there that's become huge? The Walking Dead, and The Walking Dead, outside of pretty much the Telltale game series, has not really had too many really good video games based off of it. As far as my knowledge, something that was that big of a comic book series, that big of a TV show, really has so much potential for really good, you know, video game potential, we hardly ever saw it besides the Telltale games. You know, the Telltale series, the two, first two seasons, obviously now season three is coming out. Left for Dead was a huge success by Valve. And they apparently seem to have a big issue with trying to make the games with the number three, like Half-Life, for example. So why don't they, in the meantime, while fans wait for Half-Life, I mean, for Half-Life 3, I'm about to say that, Half-Life 3 confirmed. Um, Left 4 Dead 3, if that ever happens, which it should, a lot of people love that video game franchise, a lot of zombie fans, gamers, love that franchise. And it is a good franchise, it's really, really fun. Now, before that ever happens, they should collaborate with The Walking Dead, with the creators of The Walking Dead, and make a spin-off called Left 4 The Walking Dead, where it could be, you could make it some sort of storyline, side story, that takes place in between some sort of season, where you play as Rick and the crew, and you basically go through some sort of missions where it's important in the game story, but it's not really that important where it's going to affect anything in the comic book story or the, or the TV show story. Now, depending on how they do it, I'd say it makes make more sense for the TV show because you'd get someone like Daryl included in there. I think Daryl's a fan favorite, and a lot of people love Daryl. Unless you include him as a secret character from the TV show in the game based off the comic books, but whatever, the TV show is the, you know, 
is pretty much now the huge thing that a lot more of the masses might know about. So I'd say you would base the game more so off the, the TV show than the comic book. Not saying the comic book doesn't deserve it. Throw in some tidbits there, some characters in there, some super secret unlockable bonus characters for characters that are pretty much only in the comic book. Like, like the story can basically go around this cast with like Abraham and Sean and um, Carl and Maggie and you know Glenn and Rick and all that. Like the main cast in the later seasons, like seasons like four through like seven. But you can pretty much put some secret unlockable characters in there, like. From earlier seasons like Andrea and Shane, Herschel, you know, all those people. And then you can probably include the Telltale characters like Lee and Clementine as super secret characters. And some characters based off the comics. Like, you play through the story and if you beat certain objectives, if you beat certain missions, you can unlock super secret characters from older seasons for or comic, the comics or the Telltale games as super secret bonus characters that you can play like in a free play mode. And the story could basically reflect around the four-person group from the the current cast, going through and trying to survive some sort of zombie apocalypse story that could focus, like, it could be its own little story that focuses right in the game, where it's not going to impact the grander scheme of things, but it's, it's its own fun little side story for what maybe happened between certain parts of seasons or certain sections or whatever. Like, I think it'd be pretty cool. Left 4 Dead is a really popular zombie video game franchise, and The Walking Dead is a very big you know, property of zombies in both TV show and in the comic books and the video game series from Telltale. It's huge. Why these two should not collaborate, I have no clue. These two identities, these two IPs, these two properties would clash well in the game. And Valve would be, you know, doing something to tide fans over until Left 4 Dead 3, if that ever happens, and you bring in the Walking Dead fan base to play the video game where you play as Daryl and Rick, and you run around helping each other with medical stuff and shooting up zombies. Come on, it makes too much damn sense. <laughs> That's my number 10. This is my number 9. On the process, you know, in the speaking process of talking about the Telltale games for Walking Dead, this next one is me talking about ideas I would love to see for a Telltale game in the future. Now, I'm kind of cheating here because I have more than one property in here as an idea. In fact, I have four, but you know what? It's my list and I really don't care because these are four identities, four franchises I think would work really well in Telltale's, you know, game franchise of them, you know, you making your own story, crafting it along. You have Spider-Man, which they're now doing the Batman franchise. Batman has a long list of rogue gallery villains. Who is another superhero that has a super long list of, you know, you know, rogue gallery? That's pretty much really recognizable, really memorable, really iconic villains. Spider-Man. You could be, you could do certain parts of the story as Peter Parker, like you do as Bruce Wayne in the Batman story, and then you play as Spider-Man. Other parts you can include Doc Ock, Venom. You can include Electro, Carnage. You could have the Sinister Six basically in there. You could have the Green Goblin, the Hog Goblin, the Kingpin. You could have characters like the Punisher, Black Cat, and Daredevil show up as side characters. That's a very major story. Then you have the Harry Potter world. And it's like the, the Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. You could either go in that direction, do a game based on that, or something where it takes place in the Harry Potter world, maybe in Hogwarts or in another school, and you're a side character doing a small side story that takes place during the story of the books during the story of the movies, or it could be its own off-the-wall story that takes place before or after, or whatever the heck. Just, it's a very big fantasy world that a lot of fans love. And there's Ghostbusters, you could have a comedic horror-based game, and whether you want to go with the new Ghostbusters, which a lot of people probably wouldn't want, or the iconic classic Ghostbusters, which most people would want, and I'm assuming the creators of the game would really want. you got a very popular IP there that a lot of people would love to just see this like, story that maybe, maybe you can do a story that connects the old Ghostbusters with the new Ghostbusters. I don't really give a freaking crap if the new Ghostbusters are supposed to be in a different reality, a different timeline, a different story. It's different continuity altogether. Put those two things together and show the old, like, you know, old iconic Ghostbusters, like Egon and all that, show up and teach these new Ghostbusters like a story where it connects them and it's like passing of the torch or something like that. And then you obviously have 007, which every episode of it could be some random espionage adventure going out and hooking up with the Bond girl and killing the villain and going through their base and doing all that stuff. Four different IPs, four different 
properties that I feel would make the most sense for a Telltale game. Just their iconic style of choose your own adventure and have it impact the end of the story. What will your decisions do? Will they be good for you or bad for you? Will your, some characters end up dying? Will you be able to save some characters? Maybe like, you could do something with Spider-Man like where you have to save Mary Jane or something or the Ghostbusters where you have to save some civilians or Harry Potter or maybe some character dies if you don't make a, if you make a mistake or you can get into a relationship with one of the characters or you see some sort of background story on some of the older characters maybe like a Dumbledore or something or if you're in the Fantastic Beast world like something that takes place in America during that time and then James Bond you can go off the wall you can base something off one of the books from uh, Ian Fleming or you can do an entirely original story which would probably make the most sense in terms of the stories that the Telltale games do like crafting your own story and making your decisions, how much will your decisions impact. These are four identity properties, franchises, I think would make the most sense for Telltale games. That's my number nine. My number eight is a Ruby fighting game. This series from Rooster Teeth, which has only started how many years ago? Like four years ago? Three I forgot exactly when Ruby started. Like, it's grown so big since then. From a small little, like, show that was pretty much just on the internet from just a team like Rooster Teeth that did stuff like Red vs. Blue. And it's become almost a very iconic <laughs> franchise. It has its own merchandise. It does have a video game, which, give or take, is kind of meh, actually. It deserves something else. And I think a fighting game would make the most sense because look at all the characters you got. You got Ruby, Weiss, Blake, Yang. You got Neo, Neon. You got the Team Juniper people. You got villains. You can put in, you know, Salem in there and Cinder in there and Torchwick in there. All the other students, Velvet, and, you know, all these students that have a variety of moves, different weapons they use, different fighting styles they use. Throw them all together in one big giant fighting game and just have them fight it out now the style of fighting game could you know vary depending on what you know <laughs> I, I would personally go for something that's like a 3d like you know the Budokai Tenkaichi slash you know Xenoverse Dragon Ball Zines where you're inside a map and you're battling each other out and it could be like you know one on one two on two three on three four on four like a team based battle where you can have free for all like eight to ten characters battling each other on a battle royale just a big 3d arena Plop in the Ruby characters and have each other kick each other's butts and just big multiplayer action, online, split screen, whatever. You can do an entirely original story that pretty much doesn't have to even relate to the show. And you have entirely iconic characters that fight each other with different unique movesets. Another style I could think they could do that would make sense would probably just be going with the Smash Brothers style with like four to eight characters in a big arena brawler knocking each other out of the ring. Is it a clone of Smash Brothers? Sure. Do I care? No, because I love Smash Brothers and a lot of people love Smash Brothers and it would be really working well with that style. They obviously could also go with a two, like, you know, one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two or three-on-three -three fighting game in the style of, like, Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or Marvel vs. Capcom or whatever. I think that would work, too, and it's an iconic fighting style, but I don't think it would do well with the movesets that these characters can do. So that's one I'm, it would work and it'd be okay, but I'd much rather have, like, a Smash Brothers style or a, you know, Dragon Ball Z Universe, Budokai Tenkaichi, big 3D free-roaming battling fighting game. Ruby has gotten so popular, we just had Volume 4 just start. It deserves something huge in terms of video games. I think a fighting game would make sense. That's my, for my number 8. My number 7 is going to be... An SSX 1080 snowboarding crossover. You got one iconic, you know, arcade snowboarding game from EA... In SSX, and you have another semi-simulation based, but it does have more arcade style in Avalanche, you know, from Nintendo, the 1080 series. Like, t Nintendo has this franchise that a lot, a lot of people do want to see the return of 1080 snowboarding. It is an iconic franchise from them, as small as it actually is. What way to bring it back, get it into the spotlight... For people to recognize, to then go up and do your own original reimagining sequel, a third 1080 snowboarding singular game by itself without the, you know, the SSX, then to you know cross it over with an iconic franchise like SSX. I know EA kind of sucks now, and EA is stupid and doing a lot of bullcrap. But the SSX franchise, they could they could collaborate with Nintendo, work it on for the Nintendo Switch. You have characters from SSX 
like Elise and Eddie and Simon and like Zoe all collaborating with people like Ricky Winterborn and all these other characters from you know the 10 a franchise just cross them over you can get like 16 some odd characters like eight from each pretty much and just have this big wild you know semi simulation though very arcadey sports game snowboarding where you just race to the bottom or you trick races or whatever the heck else EA could, you know, Nintendo could do really well to collaborate with this because not only would it revive 10A snowboarding for them to make their own 10A snowboarding on the Nintendo Switch and everything going forward so we could finally get 10A snowboarding 3 and beyond, but it would also revive the SSX franchise, which they tried to revive like back in 2012 or 2011 or whatever, and it was a good game, you know, this SSX right here that I have a picture of the least from, but... They haven't done anything since then, and it's such an iconic franchise from back when they were EA Sports big. <laughs> and a lot of people want to see a continuation of that too. People want to see a continuation of both, so why don't you mix them together, bring recognition and popularity back to both, and then you can go your separate ways and make new, like, more continuations of each franchise. And also, I love both franchises. Extreme Snowboarding is really awesome, and you can do a lot with it. That's my number seven. My number six is going to be... A Lucha Underground video game. We have pretty much a wrestling video game market that's overtaken and monopolized by WWE 2K every year now. We need other wrestling games out there. And I was, it was, I was split between this and New Japan Pro Wrestling. But New Japan has technically gotten games for it. And I still want to see New Japan get a game. Just because it's not on this list does not mean I don't want it. But Lucha Underground is an up-and-coming new wrestling federation to like AAA in Mexico and Lucha Libre and stuff like that. A lot of cool characters. You got you basically you got Pentagon Jr., you got Vampiro, you got Chavo Guerrero, Conan, Prince Puma, Johnny Mundo, Sexy Star, all these cool men and women in a crazy wrestling company that's off the wall. It it you can do such a crazy thing with it. You can go back and give us Finally, after WV's going so busy in simulation, give us an arcade wrestling game again. Have these characters breathing fire, doing like Mortal Kombat type style attacks, on top of doing wrestling attacks. It could be like Saturday Night Slam Masters, where it's wrestling, but it has a little bit of craziness to it. Like very arcade wrestling game, but it's a wrestling game still. And you have all these characters, and you can put it back, you put it into the spotlight for people, so you can tell them there is more wrestling out there than just WB. And if for all you fans out there that don't like the simulation of WB 2K, you got this, and it would have recognizable characters. You got Johnny Mundo, you know John Morrison. You got uh, Conan from WCW. You got Chavo Guerrero. You got. Rey Mysterio now, which would be a huge character to advertise that he's, again, another wrestling game and publish it and, like, market it with Lucha Underground. You can do so much with it, and I would love to see more wrestling games than just WWE every single flipping year because we need more competition, not only in the wrestling business industry, but in its video game counterpart. That's my number six. We are now in the top five. And my number one, number one, number five is going to be Street Fighter vs. Mortal Kombat. The fighting game crossover that pretty much everyone wants. Everyone loves Street Fighter. Everyone loves Mortal Kombat. They're pretty much the two most popular fighting games of all time. <laughs> and cross them over. I know one's mature, you know, they do, you know, you know, Mortal Kombat has the mature rating, it does the fatalities, and rips people's spines out and blows people up, and Street Fighter has never went that far. But there's a way to get around it and not pull a uh, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe where they censor everything. How about you do something like this? Like, you don't totally mature, you know, darken up the Street Fighter characters, but they have their own fatality type attacks. Like, the, you know, Liu Kang and Raiden. Raiden, I mean, sorry. Kano and all that. Could be, Jax could all have their normal you know, fatalities, animalities, and all those type of attacks. And you give, like, these ultimate finishing moves to, like, Ryu and all that, too. Like, and Chun-Li, and Blanca, and Guile, and Ken, and all these people. Like, take, for example, Ryu. His ultimate final move could be Super Hadouken, which just basically incinerates the opponent into nothing. That could be his ultimate death fatality type attack. Like, you don't totally darken up the Street Fighter characters, you just make them a little bit higher, but at the same time, you're not going to deepen down 
the Mortal Kombat characters. When they did DC Universe, they totally stripped Mortal Kombat pretty much of one of its major things, the fatalities. You keep the fatalities for the Mortal Kombat characters, and you have fatality-esque attacks for the Street Fighter characters, where it's not too, like, like out there. Like, okay, maybe you could still have, you know, you know Sub-Zero pulling out Ryu's spine, but Ryu can incinerate, you know, Sub-Zero with a big giant Hadouken. There you go. And they're two popular, iconic fighting game franchises from the 90s. You can cross them over really well and continue forward with them. That's my number five.